Today, we're showing more love to our friends in the Netherlands by doing 101 facts. Yes, these are always accurate. Yes. <laughs> As we've come yeah. to learn, not debatable at all. 100% accurate, you mother factors. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, listen, we're. You know, I love our, our position here on this side of the on this side of things is just to absorb it is it's up to you guys to correct us in the comments or not correct us but them because this video this video this gets the the conversation started this breaks mm -hmm. the ice and let's see if it's if some of these are valid some of them are like what oh that's our whole mission to learn stuff that we didn't they didn't teach us in school so we we understand that we take all of these with a grain of salt 100 percent. so kick back Pour yourself a glass of whatever you want. I'm not going to yes. tell you what this is, but let's just go in. You ready? Yeah, let's do it, man. All right, three, two, one. Greetings, mother factors. My name's Chris, and I'm here to jettison you off today on an adventure filled with windmills, water, and lots of bicycles. Wait, do you think bicycles are like portable wind turbines? No way. That's a train of thought for another day. Anyway, we're talking about the Netherlands. Yes, this stunning country of... Oh, you know what? You'll find out. But, why would Elon Musk be very happy with how the Netherlands are progressing? What low-lying wetland where wood could be found now has big metal carrying cases capable of flight? And have you ever had a dreams that, that you, um, you, had you, could you do what you want, you could do so, you, you do, you could, you, you want, you want him to do so much that you could do anything? Two out of these three questions are going to be answered. So sit down, give us a like and subscribe. I'm going to take a nap right here. Good night. As we mouthwash our way through 101 facts about the Netherlands. <laughs> that was that uh, joke about the the kid that couldn't answer a question, ask a question. Seriously? <laughs> hey, it's all right. It's all right. Let's let's do this, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Let's yeah. Uh, Netherlands. We're about yeah. to uncover you. Let's exactly. do this. Let's see. Number one, the Netherlands, or the Kingdom of Netherlands, to give the place its full regal title, is a state technically made up of four countries, Aruba, Curacao, Sint Martin, and the Netherlands. Number two. Yes. What? I've, I've been to one of them, Sint Martin, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm, again, I've said it before, but it's a discussion for another day. That, like that, I never would have thought. I never, okay. I, I guess it makes sense, right? It makes sense. Okay. I, it took me a little bit. I never thought of it like that. Like the territory is just part of the kingdom. It makes makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. yeah. At at an Aruba Curaco, is that what it is? I, I've never heard it pronounced like that. I always pronounce it Curacao, but um, Aruba Curacao. But yeah, that's cur cool. Curacao. 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 Right You're now right for now. $19. 99 right. cents. Yep. All right. St. Martin and the Netherlands. Number two. The part most people are familiar with is the Netherlands. And this country is located in Western Europe. Aruba, Curacao, and St. Martin can be found in the sunnier climes of the Caribbean. Number three. While each of those countries are technically equal within the kingdom, it wouldn't be unfair to say that the Netherlands rules the roost, as it makes up 98% of the kingdom's population and land area. Number 4. There are actually quite a few different currencies in the kingdom as a result of this four-way split. In the Netherlands itself, they use the Euro, but in Aruba, they use the Arubin Florin, and in Curacao and St. Martin, they use the Netherlands Antillian Gilder. Number 5. The kingdom has a population of roughly 17.7 .7 million people, and roughly 17.5 million of those people live in the Netherlands. Yes, I know having the Netherlands as part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands isn't the clearest, but just try and stick with me. Number 6. The kingdom has a total land area of 42,500 square kilometers if you include everything. However, if you just include the Netherlands part, that bit would be roughly 41,900 square kilometers, otherwise known as most of the kingdom. Number 7. The biggest city is Amsterdam. Oh hey look, there's the thumbnail of the video that we did on Amsterdam. Oh. It has around 870,000 people living there and up to 2.5 million if you include everyone in the metropolitan area. It serves as the capital of the Netherlands. Number 8. 
But it's not the only capital. Another city, The Hague, serves as the administrative capital and is also home to the Dutch royal family. It's the third biggest city with around 500,000 inhabitants, behind Amsterdam and Rotterdam. No yeah, when we did Geography Now, that was a big top topic in the comments is like, the what's the capital? Is Amsterdam or The Hague? Or yeah. The Hague? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Hague. I, just, I think it's The Hague. Yeah, I think it's The Hague. <laughs> Not The Hague. I love that. <laughs> it's The Hague. Like, she just, he just, she never gets off your back, the hag. Here's um, the thing about the hag. <laughs> the hag. No, so that's, okay, so it's like two, is is one official or are both official capitals? Yeah, I that, can't remember. That's, that's the confusing part. It's like one is globally known, the other one is just within the country itself is known as the capital. So that's, that's kind of confusing. I mean, yeah. it won't stop me from going. <laughs> Right, but, exactly. But it's it's kind of. I went to the capital. Oh, really? How'd you like the Hague? Oh no, I went to uh, yeah, Amsterdam. No, no. Amsterdam. Oh, what? Okay, hey, what? 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 What did you say? Mm. Cool. Number nine. And since we've mentioned the second biggest city, Rotterdam, we may as well tell you that this city of 650,000 people is home to the busiest seaport in Europe. It handles 440 million tons of freight a year, twice as much as the next busiest port of Antwerp in Belgium. Number 10. The Netherlands is busy in the international community too. It is a founding member of big organizations like the United Nations, NATO and the European Union. Number 11. Do -do 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 from here on in, we'll keep it simple and refer to the European part of the kingdom, the Netherlands bit, unless we say otherwise. The European part is bordered by Germany in the east and Belgium to the south. Number 12. Speaking of Belgium, it used to be part of the Netherlands until a revolution in 1830 saw it declare its independence and go its own way. Number 13. Anyhow, the name Netherlands reflects the country's physical attributes, as the Netherlands means lowlands. Pretty accurate since most of the country is flat and is located slightly above or at sea level. Number 14. That doesn't stop the place taking an award for the lowest lying country in Europe. The Netherlands has a mean elevation above sea level of 30 meters. The lowest point in the Netherlands, and I'm going to try my best here, is the Zui Blas Polder at Nieuwerkerk and then Legercel, and it's 6.76 meters below sea level. Whoa. Number 15. Wow, that's pretty low, man. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> okay, okay. So you guys have New Orleans over there too. Neat. Yeah, that, that's I remember that from the Geography Now episode. Is apparently uh, after Hurricane Katrina that they, the state of Louisiana and the state of New Orleans turned to the Netherlands to help with you the know levees. flooding issues and the levees and all yeah. that. So. It's, that's that's something else I remember. Yeah, no, it's. It, I mean, you want to ask you what you got to ask people that are pros at it. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Dean, around one third of the Netherlands is below sea level, so no wonder the mainland has a lot of water. Around seventy percent of the total surface consists of water. Number sixteen. The Netherlands is made up of 12 provinces, and I can only apologize so much. Nord Holland, Zuid Holland, Zeeland, Nord Brabant, Utrecht, Flevoland, Friesland, Groningen, Drenthe, Overijssel, Gelderland, and Limburg. And I don't doubt I've said every single one wrong. <laughs> what was it you said about vowels? And... They, oh, no, they have them. And they just over, they just, they just. You know what I ha what happens is just a blatant misuse. There's sometimes you use to you have too many. It just just have an equal balance of letters and vowels. <laughs> it's so many, so many. It's so many that I get tripped up. Like stop that. <laughs> All I know is that he pronounced, he slayed those pronunciations. Yes, yes. You know, uh, trust me, as a man that pronounces stuff professionally. Like that, <laughs> he, he stuck the landing on all of those. <laughs> uh, Number man. 17. Out of all the 12 provinces previously mentioned, only two of them make up Holland, and they are Nord Holland and Zuid Holland. So, yes, the Netherlands is not just Holland. Number 18. 
People from the Netherlands are called Dutch, but in the Dutch language they would say they are Netherlanders. People from the Hollands can be referred to as Hollanders too. Number 19. One of the Hollanders. Oh, that's going to be confusing as hell to yeah. keep up with. Whoa, that just like unfortunately blew my mind. It's not hard to do, but so, right, Netherlanders right. and Hollanders. Yeah, but... Holland is not all of the Netherlands is what I'm getting from that. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you'll have to keep reminding us all, all uh, oh, Dutch man. folk uh, listening to us and <laughs> one or two that may have been following us since the early days of ETS. So yeah, yeah. Just be patient with us. We're learning. Be patient. We're trying here. God. The highest points in the Netherlands is the Valseberg. This mountain is located in the southeast, and its peak rises approximately 323 meters above sea level. It's not the highest point in the Kingdom of the Netherlands, though. Over in the Caribbean Netherlands on the island of Saba, there is Mount Scenery, a volcano clocking in at 877 meters. Number 20. Unlike most places, it's possible to travel around the Netherlands via water, since there are over 6,000 kilometers of waterways. Amsterdam alone is home to 165 canals, and these waterways have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Wow. Traveling around the city via the canal tour is a major tourist attraction too, with 3 million passengers taking a cruise every year. That right there, that is one of the things I would love to do when coming to the Netherlands yeah. is traveling via the canal because that's just a completely new thing that's, to someone like us and just yeah. like that would be so much fun i i'm sure y'all take that for granted over in the netherlands but that's something exciting for yeah that's, like us that's crazy that doesn't exist here no it's like hey let's travel around the city by taxi by bicycle by boat what yeah like, that's cool yeah, I, I, do they even have that in like places like New Orleans or? I any think other... during Hurricane Katrina, a lot of them did. <laughs> <By boat. laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Travel around by boat, like the, I think the firefighters and stuff they did that. <sighs> but that's not a tourist attraction. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. That's stuff that will close down a Waffle House, and it takes <laughs> a lot to close a yeah. Waffle House. Yeah, it does. Google Waffle House Index. Any non-American that's watching, please Google that. Yeah. Your mind will be blown. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That takes mm -hmm. the 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 cake for work through the storm, 100%. Yeah, and for embrace the suck. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Exactly. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's super no. cool, man. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Let me let us know any tips of traveling via boat in yeah. the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. Number 21. Since there are roughly 100 kilometers of waterways in Amsterdam, you won't be surprised to learn that there are a lot of bridges too, about 1,500 in all. Since the city wow. is over 25% water, it's also not a shock to learn that there are over 90 islands in the city too. Man. I don't know about you, but I hope the heck you do. Because of the huge access to water in and around the Netherlands, it's understandable how they are the home to some of the world's best engineering firms for water project management. For example, there is the Directorate General for Public Works and Water Management, and is responsible for the construction and maintenance of waterways and roads to flood protection and prevention. Which is pretty neat considering 21% of the population live under sea level, and I'm like 90% sure they're not mer people. Number 23. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Mer people. Yeah, they're not Kevin uh Costner from Waterworld. Yeah, that's as close as it can get though. Mm -mm. So I guess a question that pops in my mind, and maybe it'll get answered a little bit later. With all of that water, how is the tap water in terms of drinkable? Yeah. Like, that's you know, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it, it like with all of it, like with a lot of people using it, does it get dirty or do they know how to clean it so that it's quite tasty tap yeah. water? Uh, or is it so bad that you have to distill it and make it into a uh, Heineken? Yeah, let, let us know. And, and also, is the majority of your water like brackish water or is it salt water? What kind of, you know, these are the questions because it all comes in from the ocean, obviously, right? But then yeah. is, how much how much fresh water do you guys have within the country too? 
let us so, know. Yeah, that's 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 another. Yeah, that's a good question, Spence. Yeah, that's a, that it, was a good question. It might get answered a little bit later. Maybe we're just jumping ahead here. Maybe we've known, been known to do that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Despite the Rhine River being the longest, Lake Ilgeselmeer, which the Rhine flows into, is the largest lake in the Netherlands as it covers approximately 1100 kilometers squared and has an average depth of 18 feet, which is like three me stacked on top of each other. Number 24. There's a village called Guythorn in the Netherlands that has no roads, as it's just filled with canals. This place is also known as the Venice of the Netherlands, since the canals are used for transportation too. Number I want to go there. That's so cool. But remember, remember, this is just a, what is it? Just a town, just one town, right? right? Out of the whole country. That is just no roads, just all canal. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of y'all said on the Jack Vanel video that we did, uh, visit more than just Amsterdam. Like yeah. that, that there at, that's the list. Oh yeah, for sure. man. Mm -hmm. 25. A lot of Amsterdam is built entirely on poles that are hammered deep into the ground due to the low-lying land. For example, the Royal Palace is built on approximately 13,659 wooden poles. And outrageously, the central station has half that at 8,687 poles. It's a train station! I feel like there should be more because trains are heavy. Number 26. Amsterdam receives over 4.2 million travellers every year, which is ironic as the reference couldn't be any closer to 420. Number 27. Based on Nine. the type of environment the Netherlands is built on, you know, the large bodies of water and their big old poles, you won't find a lot of high-rise buildings or skyscrapers. But this reason is definitely a good place to visit for a change of scenery from a traditional urban city. Number 28. Now, Rotterdam in the Netherlands has the world's first floating farm. At first, I thought that meant it was like a sky farm, but no, it floats on a dock on the new mass. It has roughly 40 cows in it and robots to help the farmer collect manure and distribute fodder. And even better, it's completely self-sufficient. Number 29. Ah. North Holland has a picturesque flower bulb region which is similar to all those movies you've watched that have a romantic couple running through a field of lilies in slow motion. 1.7 billion of these shiny flowers bloom across the country annually. Number wow. 30. If you take a lot of interest in flower bulbs, you may like to know that around 80% of all the flower bulbs around the world are originally from the Netherlands. That means approximately 2 billion tulips leave the country every year. Sounds like they've got postmen who solely specialize in delivering flowers. Wow, flowers. That's a, I guess it's a big deal in the Netherlands. That's pretty cool, man. I, I had to check. I know that a lot of our flowers at the grocery store, um, and like the, we have like a cold section in, the gro in our grocery stores that have like the florist part. Yeah. A lot of those, if you look at the tag, come from Colombia. Oh. So a lot of the orchids and stuff that you see come from Colombia. But that's cool. Tulips. You guys do tulips. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all y'all know how to grow stuff. And All right. I mean, in addition, to like, I was just thinking back to that floating farm. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's, that's a so cool so is that something that'll pick up steam eventually or is it already i don't know how old this video is is it already happening is this like a standard have your farm that floats because that's that's blowing my mind dude yeah where's the beef it's yeah. floating the your beef's floating away <laughs> jesus <sighs> number 31 there are over 37,000 kilometers of cycling paths in the Netherlands, which uh, is a lot of paths. And with some quick maths from my big boy brain, we can figure out that the average bike rider could cycle all these roads in, um, just over 11 weeks. I'll meet you there, I'm gonna get the bus. Number 32. There are more bikes than people in the Netherlands, as there are over 22.9 million bicycles. However, bike theft is still a big problem, leading to over 100,000 bikes being reported stolen each year. Number 33. The Schiphol Airport is scarily 4 meters below sea level, and it happens to be the biggest international airport in the Netherlands. I bet you're wondering though, what does Schiphol mean? Well, etymologically speaking, it originated in the 15th century with the language of that time indicating that the area was the low-lying wetland, hull, where wood, skip, could be found. Number 34. Since there are over 4,800 direct flights facilitated through Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, it offers one of the most direct flights to Europe, which is good news for anyone that wants to go to an impromptu trip to the Netherlands. Well, I guess the convenience of this will be more obvious when, you know, there isn't a pandemic actively ravaging the world. 
Okay. So, this so that's made... where it's from. This is when it's yeah. from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2020 ish times. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm in, we're, we're, uh, mm. <laughs> I meant, there's a way I meant to phrase that question, but I totally didn't. But I live near Charlotte and Raleigh. You live near Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Yep. Let us know. Uh, are those direct flights? I mean, we could probably Google this ourselves, yeah. but are those the most cost efficient direct flights probably. to Amsterdam or anywhere in the Netherlands? Or, uh, yeah, probably for us. A lot, there are a lot of nonstops from uh, New York. That's uh, what is it? LaGuardia? Yeah, LaGuardia. Yeah. So I think I think the cheapest flights internationally would probably be out of New York. I just I think so. Yeah. I could be wrong or Dulles, but yeah. Yeah. Number 35. Taking a look at some annual figures, in 2018, Schiphol Airport handled more than 70 million passengers. Wow. Let's compare this to a different airport, say Heathrow. In 2018, it averaged 80 million. But Schiphol Airport is a little bigger than Heathrow, so it makes. Wait, no, hang on. Number 36. The port of Rotterdam came into existence in 1283 and became a major seaport in 1360. It is also one of the oldest ports in Europe. Number 37. There's not enough space for graves in the Netherlands. I mean that literally. Cemeteries are cleared out every decade or so as they are actually rented. So when the lease expires, they end up clearing out. Out with the old and in with the less old. Oh my god, what? So you rent. You rent your plot. That's interesting. You would, I mean, in the US, like that is unheard of of yeah. renting a, a plot of land for your deceased loved ones. Probably, just... probably more so New Orleans because they can't go down. They have to build up. So a lot yeah. of they, they, they have like a lot of mausoleums and um, sp oh, shit. this came up last time and I'm still not ready for it, man. There's a yeah. word. There's a word. But yeah, you rent, you rent that, that spot. But that's crazy. So you can get evicted at after death. That's kind of <laughs> crazy. Wow. Who knew that rent prices were that bad yeah. in the Netherlands as well? Yeah, that sucks. <sighs> Jesus. Expires, they end up clearing out. Out with the old and in with the less old. Number 38. Even though Amsterdam is the capital of the country, Hague in South Holland has been the political capital since 1588. Therefore, it too holds huge significance to the Dutch. Number three. Okay, okay. So more of the political stuff happens in uh, Hague. Yeah. Got it. Got it. That answers our question from earlier. Yeah. 39. Hague is also known as the City of Peace since there are over 40 intergovernmental organizations based there. I know it's the Netherlands, but this just sounds like Switzerland to me. They even have a lot of water like in Geneva. Number 40. There are up to 20 national parks in the Netherlands. Some of the more popular ones include oh, De Werriebeen Weiden National Park and Loons en Drunens Duinen National Park. Number 41. Hoogvelu National Park has up to 5,400 hectares of woodlands, dunes and heathland. Approximately 5% of the park is preserved and it's seen as one of the largest lowland natural terrain in Northwest Europe. The meaning of life. The national parks aren't just home to woodland trails. There are actually Shetland ponies and rare birds like the Eurasian Golden Oriole. Do you think they go on adventures like Disney movie style? I hope they do. Number 43. There are close to 36,000 animal species that are found in the Netherlands. 500 of these are protected animals to prevent them from becoming extinct. Some of these beautiful creatures include the European hamster and turtle dove. Number 44. If you visit the Wadden Island of Texel, you may find that there are actually more sheep than people. So it seems like one of the best places to become like Dr. Doolittle. Or maybe graze with them, be sheared with them, become one of them. <laughs> there are so many jokes we can make right uh, now. Yep. Yep. So it's the, is it like the, the, the whales of, of Europe? The whales? Yeah. Oh, oh, whales. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, man. not the animal whales. <laughs> yes, yes. These are like the aquatic mammalian of Europe. 
<laughs> not the uh, country that re resides in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> the way I, I, like, see, we're talking about sheep. It's like, <laughs> what? It's uh, too early for this. It's, it's too, early. too early. Almost had a Peter Parker moment. Yeah. I was like, whales. I was like, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I would have, I love that you thought of that. Whales. Like, these are sheep, bro. <laughs> uh. Number 45. There are more than 2 million stray dogs in the world, yet the Netherlands was able to become the first country in the world to be free of street dogs. Wow. Number 46. Hmm. Before they were the Dutch people that we know today, the Netherlands was filled with Celtic and German tribes during the ancient times. What made the Netherlands ideal for them is the vast rivers and wetlands as they offered protection from invaders. Number 47. During the first century, the Roman Empire came knocking and disrupted the Celtic-German unity by ruling for a fairly short period of time. You know, just 300 years. Number 48. Steaming through the Middle Ages, the Franks invaded the territory and by the 800s, the Netherlands was part of Charlemagne's Carolingian Empire. Number 49. After Charlemagne died, the territory was split up by the dukes and counts. The split came with an increasing amount of wealth, as the Netherlands was one of the richest areas in Europe at the time due to its agricultural trade doing well. Number 50. In 1555, Charles I of the Habsburg Empire must have been feeling pretty generous as he gifted the Netherlands to his son Philip II, who was the King of Spain at the time. So I guess, hola Netherlands! Number 51. In 1558, Philip II needed some money, so William of Orange, who was a wealth stodholder of Holland, persuaded the Estates General to grant Philip a nine-year subsidy. In return, the Spanish Netherlands would benefit from Philip having to accept a remonstrance, which set out liberties that would be given to the Spanish Netherlands. Number 52. Philip II's character was perceived as being very cold and arrogant. He didn't seem to have any crazy interest in pleasing the people of the new Spanish Netherlands, as he never visited after 1559. Adios, Netherlands! Number 53. After some time, the people of the Netherlands revolted and it lasted for 80 years, up until the moment they gained their independence in 1648. Wow. Number 54. I'm not sure about their singers, but 1932 was when the Wilhelmus was adopted as the Netherlands national anthem. And on that day, history was made as it's the oldest national anthem in the world, as it was written between 1569 and 1572. Wow. Number 55. Based on what you know about the Dutch flag, what do you think is their national color? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. The orange? Orange. I don't know how, I don't know what the context was. I felt the orange yeah. was probably had something to do with it. That's but... the only thing. That's the only thing I can think about is the orange part and mm. orange. No, it's actually orange. This is because the Dutch monarchy is from the House of Orange. Number 56. Vincent van Gogh is actually from the Netherlands, Zundert in the North Brabant province to be exact. When he was nine, he was sent to a boarding school in Zevenbergen in the northwest of the province. Number 57. During World War I, the Netherlands remained neutral ground, but during World War II, the Germans invaded. For a time, the Nazis chose a very loose grip during their occupation, but yeah, that didn't last very long. Number 58. A popular war story is Anne Frank, with her captivating diary and all the accounts of her life. The canal house Anne Frank took refuge in during World War II is located in Amsterdam and has now been turned into a museum for all to visit. Number 59. Even though Anne Frank's house is popular, the National Museum, Rijks Museum, is the most visited museum in the Netherlands. However, out of its millions of objects, it only displays 8,000, but much more can be viewed online. Number 60. So turns out, them lions that you see on a fair few countries' coat of arms have different names for their poses. I know! You learn something new every day. The ones that are on the Netherlands' coat of arms is called the Rampant Pose. Lions are often used in coat of arms as they symbolize courage, nobility, royalty, strength, stateliness, and valor. Number 61. If you're a fan of gin, I bet you didn't know that it was invented by the Dutch between the 16th and 17th century. Number 62. Carrots were originally yellow, white, or purple. It was only in the 17th century that they became orange, all because of the Dutch. The Dutch began to cultivate orange carrots as a tribute to William of Orange, who fought for the Dutch independence. But hold on, wait. hold on. Wait a minute. Let's everyone just pump the brakes. The Dutch are instrumental in giving us orange carrots. 
As opposed to any other color of carrot that was apparently before that. My God. Wow. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Jesus. Oh, oh my God. Well done, man. Everyone that, that well, well played. Well Good played. Job. Yeah. Good job, Netherlands. <laughs> wow. Because I, I can't imagine a carrot being any other color other than orange. I, yeah, I can't. I can't either. That's, that's crazy. Mm. Damn. Cultivate orange carrots as a tribute to William of Orange, who fought for the Dutch independence. But many say that these claims lack enough convincing evidence to be true. So maybe orange carrots came from space. Number 63. Even though we are moving further and further into the digital age, we still can't forget the past. Remember those weird circles called discs that we use for CDs and DVD plays and you know? Well, they are all Dutch gadgets which started in 1963 by the corporate giant Philips, which originally started making cassettes, then moved on to CDs, DVDs, and finally Blu-ray. <laughs> Nintendo. Oh, man. <laughs> it's funny that, like, it was put... They put that fact at 63, and then next one is Nintendo 64. Yep. Come yep. on. So that's crazy. That's crazy. I remember those. I remember those compact discs. I need a compact disc player to purchase and play CDs. I do not have one in this house. Mm -hmm. um, and most uh, American households don't anymore. No. I, next time I'm at the museum, I will pick one up. I yeah, promise. yeah, or from some thrift store, or <laughs> yeah, uh, some uh, Cletus's uh, garage sale yeah, down I, the street. Down the street, <laughs> yeah, uh, I might I might get a, one of them one of them compact disc players. So yeah, uh, I feel bad for Phillips because they had like that on lock for Dude, like decades. They, they really did, and all the stuff they came out with under that brand was like not. So for me, I, I'm very familiar with Philips. Like you have the top tier, which was Sony, right? Sony stuff got got stuff done like super high quality, but Philips was right there too. It like Philips had a name for itself in that market. Yeah. And that's yeah. I I don't know. I, I got like the Sony gear from Best Buy back when that was a thing, but I got like the Philips gear in the Rite Aids or the CVSs. Yeah. And that was a good purchase. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nintendo 64. In order for science to progress, it has a lot of research that has to be done with the use of microscopes to really get up close and personal with all these little organisms. Due to this, we can give some thanks to the Dutch people, as they were the ones who invented the microscope, as the first one was made in Middleburg in the Netherlands. Number 65. Speaking about poking your eyes into different things, you may be familiar with Hermann Sneller's letter chart, which is what we use for eye tests today. However, we've adopted a modern version. The original eye test by Sneller was developed in 1862 in the Netherlands. Wow. Number 66. Dutch scientists were the first physicists to use math formula in their work. By doing this, physicists like Christian Huygens were able to invent things like the pendulum clock and improve the design of telescopes. He also discovered Saturn's moon, Titan. Number 67. Nowadays, many people have a thirst for power, but Queen Beatrix ruled in the Netherlands for around 33 years, and she ended up handing over the throne to her son in 2013, even though she was still alive and well. Due to this, many people went to the streets to pay homage to the former queen. Number 68. Following the change of leadership in the Netherlands, what was previously celebrated as Queen's Day on the 30th of April turned into King's Day. Queen's Day was then changed to the 27th of April, or the 26th if the 27th is a Sunday. Number 69. April. Yeah, that'll do. You may have thought that you haven't met a royal before, so you'll be surprised to know that the Dutch King Willem Alexander used to fly as a co-pilot for KLM Royal Dutch Airlines for two decades. So who hey. knows, you may have had the privilege of experiencing a royal flight. That blows my mind. That's so cool. Okay, you know what it is? You know what it is? It's like, is there not a lot of weight on the royals? out there where they're just like, hey, man, I like to do this. I just want to be a commercial pilot. You know, it's like, but you're a king. Like, eh, meh. Am I, though? Let's go flying. That's yes. cool. Yeah, I heard that the the Dutch royal family is a little more accessible than, say, the British royal family is. That's like, super neat, man. 
I appreciate that a lot. Could you imagine like one of our like presidents like, hey, we're just going to fly like, hey, guys, we're going to go to 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 BWI airport flying in from from Raleigh. And I'm your I'm your president. You know what? What? <laughs> Don't let this plane go down. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, that don't, would be a bad day. Yeah, hopefully it's not Alaskan Airlines. <laughs> yeah. Um. Number 70. Do we have any Dutch babies in the building? According to data collected from the World Health Organization, in 2019, the average Netherlands male life expectancy from birth was 80.4, and the female is 83.15. Pretty freaking high. Yeah. Number 71. When you think about having a baby, you probably picture yourself screaming in a hospital, going through crazy amounts of pain, or maybe Bohemian Rhapsody. On the other hand, in the Netherlands, one in eight babies are born right at home. Dutch women must have a ridiculously high pain tolerance. Number 72. The Netherlands is the second largest beer exporter in the world. In 2019, the Netherlands exported 13.7 million hectoliters of beer. That's almost 2 billion euros worth of beer. Get the beer bong, I'll get started. Number 73. The Netherlands are so incredibly beer friendly that they service the beverage in McDonald's. Being alongside Germany, France, Greece and South Korea that also serve the fizzy happy fun time beverage under the Golden Arches. Whoa. Yo, come on now. Come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How come it took me until 2024 to learn this? That you guys sell beer at your McDonald's? Please put this under extreme uh, scrutiny. Let me know if this is true. Let us know if this is true, because that is automatically you be you've become the best McDonald's. Yeah, if you've got beer, like that's nuts. Could you imagine? I'll take a number one and a Heineken, please. <laughs> what? Usually in, in the U.S., you're only going to McDonald's if a like you're on a road trip and you just need uh, something quick or B you've had a lot of beer and you need something to soak it up. Yeah. This is, so this is like the perfect mix. This is, th that's absolutely wild. I, I was not leave. expected. I was not expecting that today. Yeah. The closest thing I have to that uh, in this country is a few Taco Bells have Taco Bell cantinas where they serve alcohol. There's one in Alexandria. I know that's that cool. much. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. South Korea, they service the beverage on, in McDonald's. The Netherlands are so incredibly beer friendly that they service the beverage in McDonald's. Being alongside Germany, France, Greece, and South Korea, that also serve the fizzy, happy, fun time beverage under the Golden Arches. Number 74. Dutch people like their cheese, and that statement might even be an understatement. On average, Dutch people consume 14.3 kilos of cheese per person per year, which is roughly 41,000 calories. That is if we're just talking about Gouda, which is the most popular cheese in the Netherlands. Huh. Number seven. And I go back to my trip uh, to St. Martin a couple years ago. We were able to bring back some Gouda from there, and my God, it was some of the best tasting really? cheese we'd ever had. I cannot recommend it enough. If you have the opportunity to try some real, honest to goodness Dutch Gouda, That's do not the... pass on that opportunity. Okay. Well, we'll do. We'll mm -hmm. do because I, I am an avid cheese lover. So. Mm -hmm. You and me both. 75. The Dutch's interest in cheese has stood the test of time, as cheese had been made in the Netherlands since 400 AD. I'd imagine there still isn't cheese rocking around from that time, but I also can't prove that there isn't. Number 76. Some more cheese history is that the Netherlands has cheese markets that are older than 300 years old. Due to this, top selling cheeses can be found throughout Alkmaar, Gouda, and Worden markets. Number 77. If you're a fan of pork, you may have munched through thousands of different bacon strips without realizing that 70% of the world's bacon comes from the Netherlands. Number 77. Hold on. That Wait much bacon comes from the Netherlands. Okay, I'm already a fan of of this country. Yeah, bacon Be and cheese and beer. and they and they sell beer in McDonald's. Yeah, and, and waterways and all the uh, other things in Amsterdam that I won't say because monetization. Yeah, like sign I, me up. I am. I am. Yeah, I guess I'm an expat. I didn't know that. 
Cool. <laughs> cool. Awesome. 78. In the Netherlands, they consume close to 32 million kilos of licorice every year. So the Dutch dentist must be very pleased with the constant stream of customers they get. Also based on the Netherlands population, that is roughly 2,000 grams per person per year. Number Y'all can have that licorice. Yeah. Um, um, well, I think I think that's the term of just sweets, right? There's no way you consume that that root tar called licorice. I'm yeah, not, I know. There's no, no way. way. That had to be a that has to be like the Twizzler family, not licorice. Like, bleh, no, I can't do it. Licorice is the bane of my existence. Yeah, I and I think the only people in this country that like black licorice are like old dads yeah like where they like, don't they don't deserve full flavor so they just they know that so it's like a penance they just punish themselves something like that 79 we all have our fix to keep going in this world and for dutch it's coffee in the netherlands the dutch drink more than 140 liters of coffee a year which is equivalent to around 3.2 cups a day this makes netherlands one of the world's biggest coffee consumers number and yep, add that to the list of what we just said. Okay. It's good. I, I am just fan, fan, fan. All right. We would have a good time in <laughs> yeah. the Netherlands. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. AC. The Netherlands is rich in a number of natural resources, including natural gas, petroleum, limestone, sand, salt, and a number of agricultural products. For this reason, it's not a surprise that it makes a lot of money through exports. But how much in the world dollars is it does it cost? Well, it was estimated in 2017 that it made $555.6 billion from exports. Number 81. Wow. The Netherlands is the third largest agricultural exporter in the world after China and the US, which is an amazing achievement considering the size of its population. Wow. Number 82. The Dutch are the tallest people in the world. The average height is approximately 175.62 centimeters. And compared to their 80 kilogram average weight, it begs the question, what in the world are they eating over there? Number kilogram average weight, 175. Right, I had to go back and see those numbers. The Dutch are the tallest people in the world. The average height is approximately 175.62 centimeters. Okay, 175.62 centimeters. Let me just find what that is in inches. Six two centimeters to feet. It's six three. Five foot five foot nine. That that's the average height is five foot nine. Wow. And that's that's our height. Hey. Combined. We have we're the same height. Uh five foot I, nine. I'm I'm gonna be coming home soon, guys. Just stay <laughs> stand by. <laughs> yeah and the weight is and compared to the 80 kilogram average weight it begs all right 80 kilograms 80 yes. to pounds that is 176.3 pounds there you go there you go mm, that's all right y'all all right man showing off the question what in the world are they eating over there number 83 the netherlands has the largest amount of people that work part-time in comparison to any other country in the eu in the netherlands close to 27 percent of men and 77 percent of women work less than 36 hours a week number 84 most of the time you might just come across your mate and just wave hello in the netherlands it's normal for dutch people to greet one another with three kisses so as a foreigner if you mess up the first two kisses third time's the charm <laughs> Number 85. Nice. Around 6 million souvenir clogs are created in the Netherlands every year. Clogs were worn regularly in medieval times, but now most people just purchase them for display purposes. As I guess they're not as fashionable anymore, or comfortable. Are they comfortable? Can you tell me if they're comfortable? I'm asking for a friend. Number 86. Many countries are developing efforts to be more green nowadays, but the Netherlands seem to have been on that route for a while, as its wind power generation accounted for over 11% of the country's energy consumption in 2020. And if we're talking watts per hour, it produced just shy of 14 trillion of them zappy boys. Number 87. Speaking of them windy boys, in 1221, the first Dutch windmill was built in a town called Willemskerke. However, this place has been flooded, so it is no longer around. On the other hand, the oldest windmill that is still intact was built in 1441 and is known as Grafelitschke Corin Molen. Number 88. The Netherlands created the first solar cycle lane in the world. 
the solar panels embedded in the cycle path could generate enough electricity to power three houses, therefore making it a great sustainable way to change how we get energy today. Number 89. Wow. Steps further in innovation that the Netherlands have begun to take include tackling climate change with a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 49% by 2030, which they are currently on track to achieve. I think these sort of goals would make Elon Musk stop breakdancing. Number 90. Netherlands currently has plans to ban petrol and diesel cars by 2025, which would be a huge step in the right direction for the environment. I know you're smiling right now, Elon. Number 91. But the Netherlands isn't just home to sick, nasty windmills, lots of water, and an amazing ability to pave the way in tackling the climate crisis. It's also the home to Heineken, Unilever, Dove, Shell, Spa, and so much more. Number 92. Roughly one in every five people in the Netherlands are immigrants, and in Amsterdam in particular, around one in three people are of non-Western origin. A number of popular backgrounds people come from include Turkey, Suriname, and Morocco. Number 93. Outside of the Anglosphere, that's countries that have been or are currently associated with the British Crown and or have been under US rule, the Netherlands has the highest English proficiency. As a result, more than 90% of the population can speak English as a second language. No Sold. Yep. Um, Sold. We're going over. <laughs> yep. I'm there. <laughs> and in addition to uh, all the stuff about environmental friendliness, like, come on, man. What more could you ask for? No, dude, you can't. Like, that's... The uh, well, since I won't be driving there, it doesn't matter to me, right? You know? Hopefully, there's good public transport there, yeah. yeah. And well, we, we've you... learned that though, like across the pond, they do the public transport eons better than we do, so right, right. You can actually rely on public transport over there, right? You have to drive if you live in the United States yep. and probably Canada too. Yep. Number 94. Other than English, over 50% of the population also speak German, and just over 20% speak French. Netherlands also has its own sign language, called NGT, and has 17,500 users, though it's still waiting for recognition. Number 95. Relating to religious denominations, more than half of the population does not identify with any religion. 35-40% to are Christians, with Catholicism being the highest denomination. 5% are Muslim, and the rest identify with other religions. Number 96. I don't know how in the world this is quantifiable, but the Netherlands has officially been declared as the sixth happiest country based on the World Happiness Report in 2020. It got shafted by Norway between 2019 and 2020 as it was moved down from fifth by the Big Nord. Number. All right, so a new happiness thing came out, and I don't know where Netherlands ranks now, but at the the countries that are more notable, that's a discussion for another time, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we should totally check that out in one of our videos. Just just kind of like check out the happiness scale. There you go. We'll probably do it after this. 97. By use of a survey, it's possible to calculate the best country to raise your kids in. They've done this a few times over the years, but last year in 2021, it was calculated that, and maybe you can guess given the video, that it's Sweden! Yeah, it's not our flat boy Netherlands. It was ranked fourth by scoring 95.56 out of 100. Number 98. In 2001, the Netherlands became the first country in the world to legalize same-sex marriages. Well, at least they're changing the lives of people, even if they're potentially lying about carrots. Number 99. Some people want equality while others want equity, but what we can all agree on is that a fair trade is needed. In 1988, the Dutch invented the first fair trade label. So it's official, the Dutch are certified innovators and the Netherlands is the home of greatness. Number 100. I've never been the best with numbers, but Amsterdam on the other hand seems to be super okay with those super confusing symbols. Amsterdam is home to the first stock market through the creation of the Dutch East India Company, which became the first publicly traded company. Well, be careful, watch out, you're going too fast, it's number 101. I know what you're doing right now, don't look away, I caught you in the act. Yes, you, I caught you using it anyhow. You like to do it whenever you want, oh, you disgust me. What you have been manipulating to your will was originally created in the Netherlands, and it's called Wi-Fi. An early forerunner of the technology was invented in 1997 in the Netherlands, and Dutchman Cees Lynx is known as the father of Wi-Fi. So that was 101 facts about the Netherlands. Did you learn anything? Are you from the Netherlands? Do you want to go to the Netherlands? It seems pretty neat there. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, we get ended here. Hell yeah. I say yes, that's a yeah. great crash course on convincing two American boys to want to go to Hell the yeah, Netherlands. Man. Hell yeah, man. All right, cool. I didn't know I was from there. Now I know. I know. We're like, hey, where are you from? Spiritually, <laughs> I'm from the Netherlands.
Giants. I'm with you. I get it, man. That's all the boxes checked right there, man. Pretty much. There's not. Granted, you, you gotta let us know in the comments, guys. Gotta please. You gotta let us know in the comments what was yeah. what's right, good, what's wrong, what's, right, what's, what's exaggerated. Wrong. Yeah. What do they miss? But no, this was a great video, man. I, I love that there's someone out there that can put these things together. Okay, yeah. I applaud them for that. For that, yeah, it's a lot of research, and <laughs> we're just uh, giving our opinion about it. So, yeah. hats well, great off video. Hundred one facts. Their original video is linked below. So, thanks for watching <laughs> us, our reaction. Consider subscribing for more. And what else, Dan? Unplug and do something legendary. See y'all in the next one. Later.